Good evening, Saloni. Hi. Nice to meet everybody. So good to have you today. Like I messaged her, and she says yes, I'm free. I mean, for she's got a lot on her plate, figuratively as well as you know, yeah. this <laughs> actually. But she yeah. she was so sweet to uh, come here today. So a bit about your life. Where did you grow up? Uh, school, college, and one lesson from there. Okay, so first, thank you so much for having me here, and it is wonderful to hear about everybody. And congratulations to you. I think it's such an inspiration, thank you. really. And uh, Nayan, it was lovely to hear. I mean, uh, the amount you do, it's um, it's something to you know aspire actually for all of us. I think that's brilliant. Now, a little bit about me. <clears throat> I was I'm a Juhu girl actually. Oh. Yeah. So I was born and brought up in Juhu, and um, so actually from and I was visiting my mum now, and it took me like half an hour to get. <laughs> Over here, it was a twenty. It's a ten-minute walk actually, so it took me um, half an hour to get here. But I was in Jamnabai Narsi School, okay. and uh, <clears throat> so at that time, Jamnabai was like this big snobbish school, and everybody was, you know, only the the actors' kids used to go there and things like that. But uh, um, <clears throat> it didn't really make a difference to my family and me. Uh, we're a very simple family. However, we are very career oriented. All the women in my family have worked all their lives. They have moved to uh, India after, during the partition. Oh. So they've actually come up from nothing. They've left all their things behind. And at the same time, they've come to India and each one in the family has been um, an, a, an amazing achiever. Everyone has, um, as a part of the inis initiation into the world, into the Career or career world has had to travel across the world. So they have the family has saved up their money and, deci and um, decided that everyone should go abroad to study at least one wow. semester, at least one small course. But everyone did, and there were a lot of people in the family, and uh, <clears throat> so which is really nice. I've got that background. I've got the background of you know where a woman was no different from a man. Uh, I was expected to do everything my my brother did. Uh, I was expected to. Uh, like I was a, you know, I was. It was imbibed into me that I have to pay my way through life, and uh, nobody's going to pay for me. So uh, immediately after my eleventh, I be during my eleventh, I began to work okay. because I just decided that I don't want any money from my parents, and I'm better than them. You know how all teenagers are. You know we think we're just too smart, but uh, that's how it you know went on. But I managed to kind of do little odd jobs and. Throughout my life, I finished my master's in commerce, and uh, I went on to become a teacher at uh, a professor at uh, HR College. Wow! Yeah, so I was teaching, um, which is like really a very intimidating thing for me. I was in the, I was I think I was 24 years old, and I was teaching uh, the TYB Com students advertising and marketing. So, which was uh, very intimidating because no one took me seriously. The other professors didn't take me seriously. I was very often asked to get off the podium and leave the classroom if a senior professor was passing by. Oh. And it was difficult for me to explain, like literally every day. I had to explain to somebody you know, the other, like, you know, I'm also a professor here and I'm not a student who's acting too smart or whatever. So uh, it's gone on like that. I have worked in a, <clears throat> I worked in a, a merchandising outfit okay. and um, learned a lot from there. That was like a really good learning for me to an interior decoration firm which was also brilliant because they were you know very focused on just doing stained glass stuff which was so it was literally working in the factory as well as talking to the clients like ambani's so we've oh, done work okay. for them as well so it was uh, a, a a huge learning for me okay so this is basically my journey so a bit about your family your parents siblings what do they do and a bit about them okay so my um my, like i said you know my in my family everyone is a doctor all my oh. aunts were doctors and my mum has been working all her life. She's still, she's 80, she's still handling my dad's business. She wow. does the accounts for my dad's business. And my dad is no more, but he was the only one in, the, in my family who started, had a business. Otherwise, everyone else has either worked for the UN or worked for, uh, you know, different uh, outfits across the world. And um, so my dad's, uh, I mean, I was a little inspired by my father to do something of my own. And uh, so I have my brother, who's also working with my father, uh, working, take, has taken over my dad's business. And I obviously wasn't too interested. I wanted it to be only mine. So, <laughs> you know, that was the thing. And that, yeah. That's it. Yeah. You had a sister also, which you recently, yes. you lost a sister. Yeah, I had a younger sister who was recently passed away. Uh, she was living with my mum. She also was dealing with mental health is issues. And she also had cancer. But uh, the thing was, it was, um, um, you know, with her, it was a just a lovely bond, yeah. and you learn so much 
you it just makes you a very much wiser much more empathic much more compassionate person and nothing really matters you just realize actually nothing really matters <coughs> so it's been a it's she she has added a whole lot of value to my life super yeah so now we'll come to quick gun sam 9 to 5 or 24 by 7 uh 24 by 7 <laughs> yeah okay. ritik or tiger shroff ritik i have not seen tiger shroff okay. as yet yeah yeah <laughs> okay tom hanks or tom cruise tom cruise he was the yeah. first top gun <laughs> top gun yeah soul food you can always eat no matter what you know the bombay sandwich i love the rasta ka yes. bombay sandwich <laughs> isn't it yes. yeah so all the food safety thing goes out of the no, way no you know say what the hell is this <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't you there yeah <laughs> You, the packaging also doesn't matter there yeah. is newspaper <laughs> the purana <laughs> paper they put it in and all yeah there is nothing like it great as to the flavor as to the actually actually so one question we didn't i also didn't where did you meet samir so i met him uh, just after college at someone's house at a friend's house you know and uh, we but we didn't we just like met each other we were friends for a very long time he had his own life and uh, he was quite the ladies man mm. so yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Actually, he is still. Yeah. So it's we just we were just friends, and then uh, it just so happened my like I was a, a, I was a little older, and my mum just told him like he'd come home once with some friends, and he said you know like find a nice Hindi guy for her. I want her to get married. He said I'm there no. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it went on to be like that. Super, super, yeah. great. Okay, so let's go to your FBI journey. Yeah. When did you guys start? Uh, so this actually happened. Um, I think around nine years ago, hmm. the entire journey as such, and you know we were both working prior to this. He was with a Discovery Channel, and I was with the Hindustan Lever. Okay. And uh, we both with this whole romantic, idealistic thinking. You know, let's leave our nine to five jobs and and fixed income, and let's try something of our own because we can do much better. We kind of uh, we both happened to leave our jobs at the similar time. Similar time. and he was very we we did something else at the meantime we were also into education we were doing education consultancy we were doing a lot of uh, marketing for educational products but uh, you know the blogs were just emerging at that time and it was some really brilliantly written blogs and we anyway had a great passion for food we would be traveling across india uh, to try out different foods so our holidays and um, travels or even like you know drives were only food centric so we just Well, he, since he was reading a lot about food, actually, basically, Samir was reading a lot about food, and uh, wasting a lot of time doing that. Okay, so yeah, so it was like um, you know, I said, you know, this is not going to work. He, we started an F, uh, Facebook uh, plat, the a page. Facebook page uh, called the FBAI, and um, it was called the Food Bloggers Association India. So basically, the idea was let all the bloggers put their blogs over here, and let the people have all the blogs on one page, and that's how it began. and um then we kind of you know saw it growing and we had uh, brands used to approach us like you know can you help us connecting with people and uh, so then we just decided let's make this into a formal company where it's going to be a win win for all so that's okay. how the fbi began yeah we can okay yeah how do you market yourself i mean it's quite tough marketing you know how do you convince people to you know come online and work with you guys so actually you know we've been very lucky um because we've had people uh, seeing our page or like our page has been very authentic then we've just kind of this there are pictures on our page which are like like i said from the sandwich from a um a, a, a what do you call pav bhaji on the road to a very uh, high profile dinner mm. very so it's got everything so it caters to everybody and uh, we've fought i think managed to have great relations you know there's nothing like a personal relation yes. with somebody nothing like personal talks so we've managed to have great relations with a lot of people and i think that has been our biggest marketing that's happened of course our own social media handles have been yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's quick, i mean quick. that's something that you can't uh, take away that's our social media as our face as of now great. so it's really helped us great. so you know your flagship event your yeah. fbi awards yeah how did it start and how also how did you manage it online because everybody is used to that offline meet up and they are invites you know i wait for samir or saloni to send me that invite you know i said it's come he says it'll come it'll come don't worry yeah. your name is written over there yeah. so everybody loves to attend those awards uh, i know the way they organize it the way they have it it is so authentic you know there's a lot of awards are rigged but this is one award which is like totally totally you know like ethical ethical awards yeah. which is there <laughs> yeah. so how did you start how did the idea start about it and how did you manage it and then during covid 
how did you do that so i must tell you the initial award we were really lucky because we had great support when because we were reading all these blogs and you know we were working backwards whereas a marketing company usually works for a brand yeah. we had we had decided we're not going to work for a brand we're going to work for the people for the media so the people who are actually going to help market these brands so we were uh, focusing on the bloggers at that time and our focus since it, our focus was on the bloggers we said there's going to be a way that we can rate the bloggers and yeah. we were no one to rate them we said we've got to have a proper you know a proper body that rates yeah. the bloggers so we said you know why not just have the awards so we can have these this body that uh, of the stalwarts in the industry to rate the bloggers and we were very fortunate to have you know people like sanjeev kapoor uh, gagan anand uh, rashmi uday singh these are real stalwarts and who've been in the industry for many many years so we were fortunate to have them support us and they were totally on board with the blog, with the awards then we had the jw marriott yeah. uh, which was you know at that time one of the nicest hotels in bombay and they also were very excited to be a partner with us so we were fortunate to have that and that kind of set the award Ball rolling. Rolling. Yeah. Great. Covid nineteen. How do we manage it? Oh yeah. Did you save money or made money? Arey boss, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Who made money? <laughs> Seriously. No. So awards. No, no, nobody. Really. <laughs> I don't know what to say. But um, the in Covid nineteen, we had the awards online. Okay, so which was brilliant because we could have our uh, we could have jury members from all over the world. Mm. So which was really nice. That so that was a nice thing that the person didn't have to be present. Though even earlier, like Gagan Anand, who was such a big chef, he wasn't present. But you know, he was the only one who was not present mm. earlier. But now this time we had Rashmi, who was somewhere in Europe. We had some uh, Sanjeev Kapoor, who was somewhere else. Then we had Gary Mehigan, who was somewhere else. So we had a a, a wider you know jury. So, which was nice. Our awards were really nice, actually online. However, I prefer the offline. Offline, yeah. Yeah, yeah. offline. There's nothing like the offline awards. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have a lot of IPs like yeah. Wild Asparagus Table, then your Indian Culinary, the Bakers Club India, then Hash FBI Kitchen, uh, FBI Dialogues, Home Chef Matters. A bit about each, and which is your personal favorite? So, okay. Um, the Wild Asparagus Table is um, like my baby. Okay. All right. because it was basically we had this bunch of we had a, a whole lot of home chefs we were trying to encourage the home chefs to do stuff you know a lot of home chefs were um, doing exactly what they've been doing for many years like some home chefs were really good at making bengali food they were just doing that mm. so we wanted them to get out in the open and also experience other kind of food so we started the wild asparagus table which is uh, only international cuisine oh. so the idea was there we home chefs would meet up once a month And have a potluck, but it was a themed potluck. So it would be either Albanian food, or it would be Peruvian food, oh. or Ethiopian food. And we wanted the home chefs to research and do. I mean, like, and literally get the uh, ingredients, the best ingredients they could get. And the home chefs were brilliant. They would actually order the ingredients on Amazon, like some an Korean potluck. This girl, lady got ninety five percent of her uh, products on Amazon, and they were all authentic uh, Korean ingredients. So it was, a, you know, it was a treat and a feast to us because um, you won't get that food anywhere, anywhere in in India. You won't get that food. And Albanian cuisine, nobody had heard of, uh -huh. you know. So it was very interesting. We had a German potluck. You know, I mean, most of us thought German means non-veg and it means potatoes. That's it. But you know, we had only one potato dish. Mm. There were like around twenty six dishes, and out of the twenty six dishes, there was just one potato dish. and wow. there were a lot of vegetarian dishes so it is just brilliant that people have actually managed to do that so like that we have um, the the wild asparagus table and now that is a ticketed pot, uh, ticketed okay. uh, pop up okay. now okay. so now we uh, we asked these home chefs to we've done that for 2 years they've got enough experience now every month we have a pop up and the the tickets are sold okay yeah and the indian culinary is like the name it sounds it's basically again the home chefs uh, talking about the regional food hmm. so we have assamese food food from nagaland so again we do it once a month and the idea is just to have try absolutely as regional as we can go to fantastic yeah. the bakers club again is like the name hmm. it's basically a club that we meet up once a month with baked food like okay. it's just baked food and um, the fbai kitchen now that's something we've started a couple of years ago it's a little food truck that we have where we give an opportunity to a home chef to use the truck as his own personal restaurant 
So it, this is a part of Bar Bank. So they've got the, the tables and chairs are there. And the home chef, the, we rotate the home chefs once a month. Okay. So every month a home chef goes into that kitchen. The kitchen is completely set up. Uh, uh, it's on revenue share. And the home chef gets to, we, the cuisine is different. And the home chef gets to cook, decide the ingredients, figure out how to cook, manage helpers, do what they want. It's their own personal little restaurant. Wow. So I think that's uh, brilliant. Home chef, yeah. home chef matters. Home Chef Matters is a it's like a conversation, all day conversation between different chefs, um, PR people, um, uh, you know, FSSAI people. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to get you on next time to talk about food safety and things like that. So the idea is to let the home chefs know how to scale their business up mm. and what are the tools required to scale their business up. Mm. So these are conversations between the home chefs and the different um, people in the industry. Okay. So, you know, uh, it's very lucky getting both of them at one time. Yeah. Because actually. they always, every day I'll see them at different places. How do you manage the constant flow of invites and food events? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just pretty face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but we get a lot of invites. That's good. And we, uh, like, we love going out. Okay. So, we mm. really do love, we do enjoy going out, genuinely enjoy it. And we don't go out together. We avoid going out together because I have also have a son. So we don't want to leave him, you know, every day and go out. So we take turns and going out. So that's why you don't see us together. Together. Yeah. Okay. How do you use social media for FBI? Because that's been one of your strengths, social media. Yeah. So uh, we, you know, we literally live, eat, and breathe social media because that's the way we convey what we're doing to our clients, as well as our clients expect that from us. Yeah. Our consumers expect, and our audience, they expect to know what's happening. A lot of uh, our audience. Uh, looks towards us because they know they, they feel they're going to get authentic reviews hmm. because somebody messages and asks us like you know was it really good and we will turn around and say no it wasn't hmm. you know we didn't quite like it because of this hmm. we are most welcome to go try it but this, we didn't like this particular thing so we have a great audience we've got great um, followers who've been with us throughout so I mean we, I really don't know how to talk about how do I use social media I use it all the time every time really which is your favorite um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which is your favorite? So, you know, like, like he said, um, for me, Facebook also is again, is very personal. Hmm. Okay, so there are days that I will be completely off Facebook because I really do not want to interact with, do anything personal. Hmm. But Instagram is something I'll use every day because that is work for me. Instagram hmm. is a v much higher visibility. So uh, that and Twitter, I go on to because I want news. Hmm. I go to on, go on Twitter yeah. to get news. And LinkedIn is again just to show that I've done some work. I'm also <laughs> existing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Your hobbies besides going out and eating. Okay. Uh, so I really don't get much time to have a hobby. But you know, I, my family is my biggest, uh, it's my biggest thing. Okay. So I try and spend as much time with my family, which is basically my mum. My son doesn't want to look at my face. He's 17 years old. So, but my mum, we try and do a lot with her. And uh, I love watching movies. Netflix is like an addiction. So I think at the moment, uh, that's it. You know, Netflix is the only thing I wear towards Netflix and reels. You quickly keep rolling, scrolling, scrolling up like that. Rolling. Yeah. Great. So what about your right now national? What about going international? So, you know, we actually did try. We did get an opportunity. We did do some, some, uh, a little event in Bangkok. And then uh, we also got an opportunity to do something in California. So we did that, but however, I think we're a little too small to manage those things and sustain those things. Mm. We would love to do it and we would love to uh, figure a way out to do it. But uh, at the moment, it's not something that we should unnecessarily try until we don't have that backing. Mm. Yeah, because those will be just one or two things, which is again, too much work for us, you know, to um, do. Right. Yeah. What about getting funding? I mean, Yes, are yes, you, I, I met somebody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. what is it? If you get, supposing if you yeah. get maybe a million dollars tomorrow, what yeah. would you do with it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what would you do with it? I would. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just heard she million dollars, I'm very happy. No, no, no. So I would definitely, because I was just talking to someone today, you know, because I, there's a lot. The vision is getting clearer and clearer as we go along. Since it was a nascent, since it was a small thing we started on our own, we really didn't have a big, very big vision. Mm. The vision is just getting clearer. So now I have an idea about what and where I can take the FBAI to. Mm. So uh, if I do get the funding now, I have an idea about where and where what we can do. do. Yeah, I would definitely put it all there. Right. I wouldn't go traveling. Yeah. Yeah, I would put it all there. 
So the one last question, is the food ecosystem equally re represented by both genders? Um, yes. So in different categories, okay. So like like you can see as your uh, influencers, hmm. there are more women, hmm. okay. But at the same time as chefs, there are more men. men. Hmm. So the entire ecosystem, there's a good balance in the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So where do you see this going in the next maybe couple of three or four years? I I'm just hoping uh, I'm just hoping for a lot more. We've got a lot more IPs coming up. Uh, we are planning to do um, we are planning a lot of uh, like nationwide mass things. Mm. Okay, right now we're not sticking to niche anymore. We're trying not to stick to niche. We've we've hoping hoping to do that. And if I get the funding, okay, if I get the funding, <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, it would probably. Uh, be sooner than two, three years. Yeah. Superb, superb. Yeah. Saloni, that is fabulous hearing. I got to learn so much about you and how you and Samir met that. It's going to be online. Huh? So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank it's been you. great having you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank, thank you, you so much. all for hearing me out. Thank you. <laughs>